I welcome you all to the third conceptive lecture in this series. Yesterday we talked about Sara Saleri's novel Meatless Days, and we made a specific reference to the two chapters which are included in your course. The first chapter is about women, and the second chapter, which is numbered at six in the novel, is about the father. the father of the authoress of the novel and who is the authoress of the novel or author of the novel there is no other person than sara saleri herself sara saleri's father his name is zed saleri he was long associated with the higher echelons of governance in pakistan he was an eminent journalist and a an renowned statesman he was twice the editor chief editor of the now defunct in the pakistan times defunct means which is no more in circulation which is gone which is no more published so he it, it used to be a prestigious newspaper and uh, it was in government's custody after you fan took over the reins of power in 1958 before before that the pakistan times was owned by me after haruddin a private person or you fan nationalized it and it became a kind of a you know a spokes medium of the government the pakistan times the chief editor was mr saleri in the context of what we have been talking about saleri sara saleri and her father and her mother it would be useful to inform you that sara saleri's father said a the kind of an ambivalent person in the sense he was no doubt very intelligent very talented but the other side of his person it was rather bleak bleak in the sense that he that he backed the you know dictators he somehow aligned himself with the power circles in the country and he became their spokesman the detractors of saleri they level very harsh criticism against him on this score Saleri sided uh, with the you know forces of dictatorship instead of calling a spade a spade instead of advocating the truth advocating the democratic norms in the country Sara Saleri was not oblivious to her father's flaws that i have just referred to she knew that her father was pro dictatorship she knew that her father was somehow an extent an eccentric person she complains of the cold behavior of her father vis-a-vis her mother this is all that we read in the novel novel this novel can be read on two levels one a kind of a biographical level which means that it unfolds the 
life story of its author but you know it is not history nor is it a biography it is a work of fiction also bada bhi dete hain kuch zebra daastan ke liye she she has taken some facts and then she has intermixed these facts with some fiction in order to make his narrative palatable palatable you know means likable acceptable to the readers the stories that she has narrated with great relish in the novel they excite us they excite our curiosity she has plentifully refer to some verses from urdu poets with their translation or with their transliteration she has also talked about the events events of the past as well as the events of the present the historical facts she has referred to them sometimes summarily sometimes in detail so it becomes a kind of a pot pot puri pot puri of different things pot puri p o t p o u w r i pot puri means a mix a mixture a mixture of facts fiction figures character portrayal anecdotes anecdotes are episodes in the common happenings in the life of the author suleri migrated to the united states first as a prospective phd scholar and then as a member of the faculty at the university of yale which is a prestigious university in the united states she stayed there almost her whole the career she retired as professor of english literature at the same university in recognition of her services to the university she was granted the status of a professor emeritus Suleri looks at things from the perspective of a watchful educated enlightened pakistani she is not only a pakistani by birth she is also an american by naturalization it would be interesting to know that she married a christian <coughs> she married a christian it was the choice of the christian not her choice and who was it his name was mr goodyear he was a leading american merchant businessman he proposed to her when he was in his 
in his 60s and the lady in her 40s. And then Saleri became Sara Saleri Goodyear. This is her full name. The man did not convert to Islam, nor did Saleri convert to Christianity. They have since then coexisted. Their marriage, uh, their marriage is uh, almost uh, 20, 25 years or 28 years long and they have coexisted peacefully ever since they entered into the matrimony bond. Yesterday, as you might remember, I told you about Mr. Khalid Hassan. <clears throat> Khalid Hassan was an eminent writer, an eminent writer of English a prose writer and he was also a column writer. He would write a column for the Pakistan Times at that time. Mr. Saleri was the chief editor. And Khalid Hassan used to contribute a column to the newspaper <clears throat> periodically. The column was titled of this and that. It was a semi humorous column, critical, satirical, dealing with certain contemporary subjects, men and matters, all this. And uh, he did it all in a Swiftian style, like Swift. He had a very incisive you know, manner of criticism. He would not spare anyone. Nevertheless, he would uh, tinge his satire with laughter also. He would make it appear light. Khalid Hassan, way back in 2004, published an essay on Sara Saleri after having read her novel, The Meatless Days, which is the subject of our study. In his essay, it is about two pages long, he has, in his own typical style, ventured to take a stock of the novel, talk about the novel, talk about the author of the novel, and also mentioned some events which according to him have been wrongly, you know, inserted by Sara Saleri in her novel. He, for example, says that there are factual errors in the novel. According to Khali Hassan, Sara Saleri says that her father was director of the the military agency, intelligence agency, ISSPR. ISSPR. ISSPR is not an intelligence agency. Her father was inducted as an inter services public relations director. He served as a director and it was a kind of a public relations job. Public relations in the sense that he would maintain a kind of a liaison with the armed forces and the general public. This was his task. And it had nothing to do with any kind of intelligence. Number two, <clears throat> Sarah Saleri has also referred to, mentioned about Begum Akhtar. And then she has talked about Sabri brothers, the Kawals, that they rendered their performances at the open air theater Lahore, which is not correct, factually not correct. They never performed at the open air theater. Similarly, 
Sara Saleri is said to have referred to the renowned singer Nurja as having been granted the title of Melody Queen by the government. This is not correct. The title is self-styled. It was not granted to her by any government agency. It was in fact in recognition of her services as a melodist, as a singer, and her lovers, her fans, they bestowed upon this title. They bestowed this title upon Nurja. Another important error or discrepancy in the novel that she has told us is that Sarah Sillery has confused the events of 1965 and 1971 in the novel. 1965 is an important year because it was in the September of that year when there was a war between India and Pakistan. Similarly, in 1971, December, there was a second war between the two countries. She has confused the two wars, which means that she has referred to, for example, one episode from 65, which actually belongs to 71. Then she has uh, translated some poetical lines from Urdu. Khalid Hassan says that the translation is inelegant, to say the least. Inelegant means not very graceful. One of the lines that she has referred to in her novel is <clears throat> Zok's. Zok was an Urdu poet. Not Zok, but Momin. So, I am not sure what I So, <clears throat> it was not Ghalib, but Zok who said that he would exchange his entire poetic output for that single verse. Sara says that it was Ghalib, which is, which is inaccurate. So these are some of the minor, you may call them minor errors, errors of facts. Taken as a whole, the novel is an apt commentary, a social commentary, a political commentary, and a piece of literature also. We might not have come across a stylistic book of <clears throat> Mitler's, of the, of the caliber of Mitler's days in our daily course of reading, textual reading. This book st stands aloft in one respect at least, and which is the style of the writer, her command of the language. It is literally, English was her mother tongue. So she writes the novel in English with great relish, with great relish. And uh, if you care to read the original text of the novel, you will enjoy reading it. Because, because of its style, because of the, because of the frankness that she displays in narrating events, in cracking jokes, in talking about anecdotes, 
in finding fault with the system the social and the political aspects of the body politic body politic as i told you earlier is the country is the state so this is uh, about this novel the two chapters the first chapter is about women women means uh, her sisters her grandmother and some relations other relations and she thinks that in the pakistani society women are downgraded this is her feministic stance in the novel she thinks that women are not given their share in the household affairs in the social milieu in general and the political system of the country and this uh, this is what she has emphasized <clears throat> in the first chapter of the novel excellent things about women and the end at the end she gives a very pertinent remark meaningful remark that there are virtually no women in pakistan it's a satirical remark as to the non recognition of female rights female privileges the position of females in our society they are downgraded they are maltreated they are, they are ignored and they are not granted the do share in various affairs social political matrimonial filial filial means family so when you read this novel you will realize two things one the style of the author you will take notice of these two important elements the style of the writer which is very racy which is very swift which is very frank and which is couched in the delicacies of the english language she knows how to choose words she knows how to use them she knows how to <clears throat> make them look ambiguous also she toys with ambiguity i i would refer you to this term it is an important term in literature ambiguity ambiguity means when things are not very clear an english writer emson he has written a book which is titled seven types of ambiguity ambiguity is uh, an integral part of literary productions when certain things are perspicaciously laid down okay the time is running out and i am grateful to you all thank you sir and i hope next time i will start with the twilight in delhi twilight in delhi there are two questions here okay sir one is about the character okay, about the character of uh, pip pip is the father and about the place of women in pakistani society next time we 
take okay, up sir. twilight okay, in delhi sir. this book is available in market you will lay your hands upon this book it is available in market twilight in okay, delhi okay sir अब आपको कोई तकलीफ परेशानी तो नहीं हुई है आपको समझ आई है बातें जो मैंने की आपसे यस सर एवरीबॉडी अमीना अमीना सुमेरा यस सर यस सर औरिदा औरिदा है यस सर यस सर अफान तसवर अली जाकिर बशीर हमना आफिस सलमान फखर अब्बास इकरा जुल्फिकार आयशा रफीक यस सर ये तंजीला तंजीला भी यस सर हां थैंक यू वेरी मच आई एम वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू यू आपने मेरी बात सुनी ओके ओके और अभी आप लोग ये ख्याल रखिएगा कोई बात आपने पूछनी हो तो आप पूछ सकते हैं अंदर कोई बात पूछनी हो तो यू कैन आस्क और ये आपका सारा कोर्स इंशाल्लाह मैं करा लूंगा यूनिट नॉट वरी आप इसी तरह इस okay. इसमें मैं इसके रिकॉर्डिंग भी इसको यूट्यूब पे डाल दूंगा फॉर दो नॉट टेक एन पार्ट इन द लेक्चर ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू